It's not every day you can tag along with a California oyster farmer. So that little island out there, that's Hog Island. It's so small. I know. But when you do, it's truly exhilarating. This right here floating in the water we call Stanways. It's one of the ways we grow our baby oysters. The 15-mile-long Tomales Bay is peppered with some of the West Coast's largest oyster farms, including the world-famous Hog Island Oyster Company. These are those racks that they're pulling now. Each one of those will have 800 oysters in it. The work is extremely demanding. How many oysters are in there? That pellet right there is probably about 8,000 oysters. The payoff is delicious. Terry Sawyer has been farming shellfish on this bay for over 25 years. His company provides up to 3 million oysters a year to restaurants in the San Francisco area. We've got water coming in that's going to bring in all the oxygen, the food, all everything these guys need to grow. As you can imagine, people love their oysters. So the industry's been doing very well since the 1970s. Unfortunately, in 2006, some problems began to emerge. What we're seeing is all the larvae or the juvenile oysters, the entire populations are crashing, they're dying. It's alarming to say the least. Farmers and marine scientists were able to eliminate the possibility of disease or low oxygen, and they began honing in on the real cause. When you have the entire loss like that, that entire crash, that's the ocean acidification that we're talking about. Human-imposed ocean acidification is happening at least 10 times faster than any example wow. we can see in the geologic record. 10 times faster? It's alarming, I agree. Desperate to save his lifelong family business, Sawyer recently started working with Professor Tessa Hill and a team of researchers from UC Davis's Marine Laboratory in Bodega Bay. The ocean is a tremendous sponge for carbon dioxide. About 30% of what we put into the atmosphere just gets soaked right into the ocean. And that carbon dioxide that enters the ocean from our human activities changes the chemistry of the seawater. And that's what we call ocean acidification. Carbon dioxide is extremely soluble in seawater. As it moves from the air to the ocean, it binds with water molecules forming what's called carbonic acid. This chemical transition is rapidly changing the very chemistry and pH balance of the ocean. How is it particularly affecting the oysters? Anything with a shell, an oyster, a mussel, all of those things use components of seawater to build their shell. And those building blocks are calcium and carbonate. The more acidic the ocean is, the less material there is in that seawater for all those animals who build shells to actually make their shells. Amazingly, it can take up to three years for an oyster to use calcium carbonate to grow large enough for market size. These are our smalls. It's a big enough oyster to put on the grill. The problem poses a serious threat for oyster farmers like Sawyer, who can no longer meet demand as shells can't develop. So he's going to dive down to the seawater intake system. And there he goes. Using innovative sensor equipment and scientific tests, Hill's team has spent a year closely monitoring the actual fluctuations in the chemical balance of the waters in Tomales Bay. We're going to take that bottle and actually analyze some of those same things back in the lab. Our instruments are actually attached to that seawater intake so that we're measuring the chemistry of the water as it flows up towards the farm here. So we're getting temperature, salinity, pH, and oxygen every 30 minutes for the last month that it's been out. And we've been doing this for a year straight now. Attached to the buoy is a large data storage device, which is retrieved once a month. It houses important information about the ocean's chemical levels. We can look at things like how much does the environment here change um, over the course of a day or a week or a month, a season, if a storm blows in. The reason why that's important is that it's hard to predict and understand what the impact of acidification will be if we don't understand all those little fluctuations. The research team hopes to eventually make this a real-time working system. The long-term goal is to provide a baseline data set so that we have some way of tracking future ocean acidification.
Has the data been helpful so far? Has it told you anything about the bay? It's told us a lot. It's corroborating the problems that we're seeing in higher mortalities. We can adapt to the changes. We can try different strategies. Perhaps no one is more concerned about those strategies than local and regional oyster bar restaurants, like the famous Nick's Cove. Right now, we're carrying about five different types from the bay. On a busy day, we go through, oh, anywhere from 1,600 to 2,000 which is a lot of shucking. <laughs> Chef Perkins has seen the shortage of oysters in California in recent years. That's troubling for multi-million dollar eateries throughout the region and the country. Are you worried about your supply? Sure. Um, I think that unless it's controlled, we're not really ever going to know until we don't have oysters anymore and we don't know why they're not growing. The science behind it has to be researched to see whether we're the last generation that's going to have any oysters at all. That's exactly what Hill and her team are literally racing to find out. Even if it is just helping to solve one 15-mile part of the scientific puzzle. I think there are a lot of ideas about how to protect small-scale environments like what we're looking at here, but um, those are pretty small pieces of the pie compared to the, the global issue of ocean acidification, which can only be solved through one mechanism, which is reducing our emissions of carbon dioxide. Only on Al Jazeera America. A team of scientists are taking their inspiration from nature. Technology is a vital part of who we are. They had some dynamic fire behavior. And what we do. Transcranial direct stimulation. Don't try this at home. Techno's team of experts show you how the miracles of science. This is my selfie. What can you tell me about my future? Can affect and surprise us. Sharks like affection. Catch new episodes of Techno on Al Jazeera America. Check your local listings or visit aljazeera.com.